Now, before we get into larger problems, I want to show you one other technique, uh, which is called cross multiplying, which is super powerful when you're trying to reduce large, uh, large problems or even small problems. Okay. Basically, it the, the way cross multiplying works is as long as you have one fraction equal to another fraction, you can cross multiply. You can take the denominator on this side, kick it up to. Uh, the top on the other side and denominator on this side, kick it up to the numerator on the other side, right? So the way it works is, if you have... So when you have one fraction is equal to another fraction, what you can do is take this, kick it up here, and take this, kick it up here. Okay? So in the end what you end up with is this box times that box is equal to this box, whatever is in there, times this. Okay, it's as simple as this, it's super powerful. I'm gonna do a couple of really quick examples of this. And uh, later on, when we, when we get into the larger problems, you'll see how, uh, you know, how it can help you out. Uh, you know, reduce a few steps when you're, when you're trying to solve the problems, okay? So just an example for cross multiplication, let's say you have something like this. Let's say you had uh, 2 over x is equal to 5 over 3, right? So all you got to do is grab this, multiply it up here, take this and multiply it up here. So x goes up here, 3 goes up here, because this is multiplication, you're not changing signs, right? You only change signs with addition and subtraction. With cross multiplication, all you do is take the denominator here, kick it up to the numerator over there, kick the denominator here, kick it up to the numerator over there. So on this side, it becomes 2 times 3, which is 6. And on this side, it becomes 5x. Right? Now, you haven't finished solving this problem yet. You've got to get x by itself. So all you do is... That's all you do is... So all you end up doing is dividing by 5 on both sides. Right? Are we on the border? Now keep in mind that when you cross multiplying, you have to have a fraction equal to a fraction. So for example, you couldn't have you couldn't have something like this and cross multiply. You couldn't have something like this and cross multiply this way because this gets in the way. The way you have to deal with this is you have to add these guys first. You have to simplify one side to make sure it equals a fraction and the other side has to, has to be a fraction before you can cross, uh, cross multiply. Take the denominators up to the numerators, right? X plus two, uh, X over five plus, uh, X, over, X over two plus five is equal to six. Now you can't cross multiply the two up. You have to move the five over first, right? So you grab this guy, bring it over, it becomes minus five. So you go 6 minus 5. On this side, you move the 5 over already, so you got x over 2. So you got x over 2 is equal to 1, and now you can just cross multiply up. Now this is as simple as this is going to get, right? So this guy just goes up here. So your final answer is x is equal to 2. Oh, that's good. <laughs> So your final answer is going to be x is equal to 2, okay? We're slowly going to build up these problems and make them more difficult.